Now, for a decade straight of the mid-1990s and 2000s, dozens of high school players opted to bypass college and go straight to the NBA. But the current rules require today's players to spend at least one year out of high school before entering the draft. Now, one former All-Star is persuading some of the best prospects to consider a unique option. 25 years ago, Sharif Abdurrahim entered the NBA as a 19-year-old can't-miss future star. Today, he presides over the G League, which is the NBA's developmental league. This is Abdurrahim's fourth season as G League president. I've you know, enjoyed it tremendously. Um, I'm learning a ton. It's challenging. Um, I think you know, my experience is you know, as a player, you know, working on the, the team side, working at the NBA and league operations, all of these experiences have lended itself to, you know, my time now as president of G League, and I'm extremely excited about, you know, what we have um, in front of us. How satisfied are you with, with what the league has grown into, and how much more can we expect in year 20? You know, I, th I think if you you start from, you know, if you look back to where we started as a league, you know, seven or eight teams basically just spread out, you know, at that point, mainly across the Southeast. So now with 28 teams, um, you know, on the cusp of being, you know, 30 for 30 connected to the NBA, all of our teams are owned and operated by um, NBA teams. Uh, we're launching an independent team in, in Mexico City, be the first North American league to have a team um, in Latin America. Um, our team Ignite, so our, our group for young prospects, um, that we have, um, the the future is bright for the G League. As a player himself, Abdurrahim was part of one of the top draft classes of all time. 1996 featured future MVPs Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, and Steve Nash. And all 10 players became all-stars from that class, including Abdurrahim. When you look back um, and, and, and see what, what that class was able to accomplish and you know it's like you know at the top there's some really you know names that just jump out Iverson and obviously Kobe and, and Nash um you know but then I think you know you have guys that folks don't even realize um Derek Fisher's Malik Rose Ben Wallace like really you know guys that had unbelievable careers that you don't believe were you know part of that draft class I think our class was you know unique in that that you had you know both big names that came in and then guys that um, grew in careers that, you know, no one would ever expect. I don't know. I'm kind of a, a traditionalist in the sense that it's, it's hard for me to, you know, put myself or put us ahead of our, our, our forefathers, so to speak. So I always, I always point to 84 um, personally. I mean, everything after us, you know, we're better than. Abdurrahim chose to attend the University of California for one year before entering the league. Now, a number of the most talented high school prospects are opting to spend at least one season in the professional ranks, including the G League, to satisfy their draft eligibility requirements. The benefit is on the job training, on what it takes to be a true pro before entering the NBA. Two examples are rookies Jalen Green of the Houston Rockets and Golden State Warriors forward Jonathan Kuminga, both of whom made history this summer as the first G League players to become first round draft picks. Houston selected Green second overall, and Kuminga went seventh to the Warriors. I'm extremely proud. Um, you know, just in a year, what we've been able to accomplish uh, with those with those players, and it starts with them trusting us and believing in the G League, and um, you know our history of developing players and helping players. Um, the job that Coach Shaw did this past year, Brian Shaw was our head coach with Team Ignite, and then just our overall approach to um, developing and helping young men learn and grow in a year, and, and it's just that as you as you. Uh, alluded to is, is an option. And more and more, we saw young men asking for other opportunities, other options other than just the traditional path. So um, you, you saw some men taking gap years. You saw some young men going overseas. And you know, with the G League, we wanted to provide them that opportunity to say, hey, if you want to come and learn and prepare, you know, which better place than um, you know, someone is naturally connected to the NBA. Being a highly recruited player yourself and leaving Cal after your freshman year, you you have a good sense of what these young men are going through, what they're thinking, what they're feeling. How much does that help them? How much does that help you uh, to be able to provide them with the tools they need both on and off the court? Um, and, and certainly in terms of an emotional sense uh, off the court. Going through it myself, absolutely, I think, lends 
to us kind of thinking and developing and understanding um, just as a young player, you know, how different you are, um, a young person, how different you are entering the professional ranks. Now, again, going back, you know, 25 years, so much has changed in that we have to, we have to make what we're doing and what we're working on relevant. We have a whole, uh, a whole a robust program of, you know, off-court programming, be it, you know, our connection and education process with Arizona State University, um, of course, we do with the, the business of sports, uh, financial literacy, uh, opportunities for them to connect and learn from other professionals around the industry. So, you know, all of it, it, a lot of that has changed again. But I think that just the, the perspective of being a young man entering the professional world did um, help. I'm Anthony Amy for BNC.